over 90% of wetlands have been destroyed along the California coast. And this is a clear example of how human development has affected our coastal ecosystems. Now at this point, it's not enough to just conserve vulnerable areas. We need to start restoring the habitat we have left. With the environment constantly changing, we need to find a way to adapt. And restoring native oysters could be a natural way for us to deal with these changes. I'm in a group master's thesis project that's looking into quantifying the benefits that native oysters could bring to the Southern California coast. The Olympia oyster is the only native oyster along the coast of California, and it used to be abundant all the way from British Columbia to Baja, but unfortunately due to pollution, overharvesting, and habitat destruction, the native oyster populations have declined since the gold rush and have struggled to recover since then. An important part of our research was to figure out just where native oysters are now in Southern California. So we did this by going to natural history museums, collecting data from local oyster experts, and conducting our own surveys in the Carpinteria Salt Marsh, which is just south of Santa Barbara. The Carpinteria Salt Marsh is part of the UC Natural Reserve System is really intended to be used as an outdoor laboratory. The goal of the natural reserve system is to protect natural areas for the purposes of research and teaching. I think a project that looks at ways to more efficiently design restoration efforts, whether it's aimed at oysters or anything else, is a perfect type of activity to undergo in, in an NRS reserve. And so oysters play a couple of important roles in salt marshes. The first of those is their food for things that you know, can eat oysters. They'll form a new element to the food web, and that's always important. Another thing that they do, though, is they provide a lot of habitat. It's really uh, their role in providing that hard substrate, that structure, um, adding that additional habitat type that then increases the overall biodiversity of the marsh, that I think is, is really where they're most important. Restoration typically involves putting out old shell material in hopes that baby native oysters will settle on this hard substrate and grow and build upon each other. There's a really great opportunity for the aquaculture industry to help with restoration efforts. Restoration projects in San Francisco Bay and in Washington have received old oyster shells from shellfish farmers and sometimes even baby oysters to help speed up the restoration process. There are some farmers already interested with helping out with restoration. And Neil Maloney of Morro Bay Oyster Company grows Pacific oysters, but he's willing to look into growing natives in the hopes of increasing their populations. This partnership between the aquaculture industry and restoration efforts is going to be really important in motivating restoration projects in the future. The future's bright, and uh, I, would, I would like to see a movement again, and we'd like to be part of it. In Southern California, restoration efforts are just getting started. There's one going on right now in Newport Bay, coordinated by OC Coast Keeper. We like to create what are called living shorelines. So one of our projects is restoring oysters and eelgrass together and study how those can change the ecosystem. So oysters and eelgrass both provide benefits as nursery habitat, providing shoreline stabilization, helping with sedimentation, and also providing a nursery ground for many important species. Our project is a bit unique because we are using coconut core, sort of a different material. A lot of oyster restoration that has been done on the East Coast have been, has been done on really large scale using plastics. We are committed to not putting plastic out into the ocean. So using this biodegradable material, we were able to create bags to put out Pacific oyster shell in the hopes that over time, those will biodegrade and provide the habitat for Olympia oysters to settle. Orange County Coast Keeper and our collaborators couldn't have done the scale that we needed to for oyster restoration to be successful without the help of a lot of dedicated volunteers, interns, and staff. 
Hopefully in 10 years, we'll have a healthy and resilient oyster and eelgrass population that's teeming with invertebrates and fish. We'll see improved water quality uh, and have a coastally resilient habitat that is adaptable to rising sea levels. Throughout our thesis project, my group members and I have talked to such a wide variety of people about the benefits of oysters. We found that with community involvement, oyster restoration could play a really important role in protecting our coastline here in Southern California.